If you were serving in the Knights Templar, say it's the year 1149, and you're campaigning around Antioch in response to Frankish defeat at the Battle of Eneb. Or maybe it's the early 13th century and you're marching in the Fifth Crusade along with the other military orders, the Hospitallers and Teutonics, together raiding Egypt. Whatever the century, whatever the place, whether you were protecting pilgrims or lining up for battle, there somewhere amongst your men you could look up and see the Templar banner, the black and white flag furled around the land. And for me, it was the Templar banner that made them unique in its ability to shape the battlefield. And to understand why it lent such power, we must first talk about the main enemy of the Templars. Or rather, of all Christians during this era, it was of course the Muslim armies. Their main tactic, used by Turks against a night charge, was that these Muslim riders would, as the knights came charging in, open their ranks, spreading out and almost melting in their formation, allowing the energy of the charge to dissipate. At a prearranged signal, the Turks would then rally again and rain missile fire onto the disorganized knights. This tactic was noted by Fidenzio of Padua, writing in the second half of the 13th century. For Fidenzio, the Westerners' main problem was that immediately after their charge, they didn't know how to gather themselves together. The Templar banner was the solution to this problem. You see, it acted as a rallying point, allowing the knights to regroup swiftly and maintain the momentum of their charge. But there's something else that made the banner powerful, and that was the rules surrounding it. The Templars didn't just have rules for the banner, for the flag, they had a rule for everything. A code that we today know as the Latin rule, and it governed everything in their lives, from the way they marched, to the way they interacted with women, to the clothes they wore, and everything else. But the rule of the banner was such that, as long as any flag remained on the field, you were to rally to it and continue the fight. If in a skirmish, say, you find yourself isolated, Fleeing rather than rallying to your banner out of fear was one of the nine sins for which expulsion was the punishment. Not just Templar banners, by the way, any Christian banner. In fact, one of the rules specifically stated that if you were to rally to the banner of a Hospitaller, the knight was to explain why he could not find the Templar banner and then to remain silent until he could rejoin his own men. And again, when you think about the way the Muslim armies fought, using these hit and run light cavalry tactics, all designed to try and break the enemy's lines, right? You're trying to, they're trying to force the other side to flee and so be hunted down easily. This code of the banner made it so that the Knight Templars could remain as a cohesive unit, maintain solidarity, and increase their own chances, not only of survival, but of victory. Thank you for listening. If you think I've missed something out about what makes the Templars special on the battlefield, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, see you all next video.